All right, sorry guys. If you guys see me stop and rub my eye, my burning. I was eating my wife's takis, the super spicy one, and I forgot that I ate it with this hand and I keep rubbing my eye with it. So my eyes irritated. What do you mean, praise God? <laughs> Anyways, so I hope everybody had a good week. If you didn't have a good week and maybe you had a rough week, well, you're not alone. I had a pretty rough week this week. I knew that was coming after the amazing baptism we had on Sunday. I knew it was just a matter of time before, you know, tests, trials, tribulations, attacks from the enemy were going to come. Because when you try to get close to the Lord and you are getting close to the Lord and you're trying to do what's right for the Lord, everybody and their mother raises up to try to come against you. But thank the Lord we got victory in him, that we can always go before him and go before his throne and um, look to him for, for help and resource when things ain't going the way we would like it to go. Amen. So with that being said, I just want to um, I want to pray real quick. Father, Lord, I just thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everybody that's on here tonight, Lord. I thank you, Father, for tonight's Bible study, Lord, the message that you gave us. Uh, Father, let us have understanding. So the, the message that's preached, we can understand it, Lord. That way we can apply it. Father, please take this burning sensation out of my eye. I won't eat my wife's talkies again, I promise. So I can preach. Lord Jesus, uh, I just thank you, Lord. Like I said, let your spirit move. Let it, let it free us. Let it change us. Let it encourage us. If we feel like there's a heavy load on us in this night, Lord, just, just take it off of us, Lord. Your, your word says that it's not meant for uh, us to be carrying any heavy loads, Father. Your word says that your yoke is light and not burdensome. That means the things in our life, Father, it shouldn't be, a, it shouldn't be burdensome. It shouldn't weigh us down. It only weighs us down when we're trying to take things on matters into our own hands. And we should be casting it onto you, Father. So I just thank you, Jesus. I encourage anyone that's maybe feeling sad, maybe struggling, or just feels overwhelmed, Lord, that you would free them tonight, that you would heal them tonight, and that you, your word would do what it was meant to do, Lord, which is to change us, Lord. And that includes myself, Father, because we need a word from you in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you and everyone else that would be logging on. I pray that over for the, their lives as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let me see. Yeah, my eye feels a little better. So, like I said, I hope everybody had a good week. If you didn't have a good week, had a rough week, a rough start. I pray that this word um, encourages you tonight. I pray that this met, um, may touch you tonight. And um, give me one second. And that, uh, like I said, that this message may touch you, encourage you, and that um, you understand that it's not Jamie saying anything tonight, that it is God speaking tonight. And this is his word. That let it change you, let it uh, minister to you, that you will grab the word and apply it. Because if we don't apply it, it's just knowledge and not wisdom. Wisdom, we must apply the word of God. Amen. So the message that the Lord gave me tonight is called the vision, not division, the vision. <laughs> so why I think it's important that uh, it's, uh, the, the message of God uh, gave me about vision is because I believe in our walk with Christ and our walk with God. It's important that you have a vision. A vision is so important because a vision is pretty much like a goal that you see in the spiritual because it's not, it's, and, and, and when I say spiritual, it doesn't mean it's only spiritual things because there's things of the spirit and then there's spiritual things. I think as you see it in the spirit regarding all things, you should have um, a vision. And not, but the important thing about this message is that it's God's vision that God has placed in your life. I believe every individual person here, God has placed a vision for your life. Like I said, regarding many different areas of your life. And it is very important that you have a vision because if you don't have a vision for something, meaning you don't have a goal or because if a vision, like I said, is pretty much a goal that you see. If you don't have one, you if you don't see it or whatever, you won't work towards it. And if you won't work towards it, then you're working towards nothing. And if you're not working towards nothing, you ain't going anywhere. And God wants you to go somewhere. So he places visions inside of you and, 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 and dreams and visions for your life regarding your life. And 
and God gave me this message tonight because you may say I have a vision already and maybe it hasn't come to pass. Maybe it's just in the process or whatever. And, or maybe you say, I don't know what my vision is. I don't know what the vision God has for my life. Or, or, or maybe I do have a vision regarding a certain thing, but not every different thing. So I was going to say is that every Christian should have a vision regarding everything, meaning every detail of your life, there should be a vision. What There should be a vision regarding your marriage. There should be a vision what you would like in your kids. There should be a vision uh, of your ministry. There should be a vision of your career path and your finances and all these different aspects of your life. There has to be a vision. Why? Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So God's saying, when you don't have a vision, they says the people perish. Why? Because like I said, it's like not having a goal. You don't have a goal. You don't know what you're working towards. So you're not going to work towards anything. And if you don't work towards nothing, you're not going anywhere. And eventually you perish. So God's saying, where there's no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So when you're keeping God's law, God will give you the vision and you'll be happy. Why? Because you know that the vision that has been given to you, you are fulfilling it. God gave me a vision to start a church. This is why we do these Bible studies. And I saw the vision and I worked towards it. I, I took a step of faith. I took a leap of faith. I started working towards it. And here we are. But we got to have a vision regarding everything. Before I met my wife, I had a God gave me a vision of what I want what I was going to have in a wife. And once I knew what that was, I didn't want to accept nothing else that came around that didn't match the vision. Because when you don't know a vision, your vision that comes from God, you're going to settle for anything because you're not sure what's for you and what's not. When you know the vision, you know what's for you and you know what's not for you. And then when anything comes by that doesn't fit the vision, you, 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 well, you're not going to go for it. There's a saying that a man with a vision can never die. Why? Because the scripture here says where there's no vision, the people perish. So if I have a vision, I can't die because meaning I still have thing, a, a thing that, uh, that has to get accomplished. There's something that still has to get done. And meanwhile, I'm working towards that and I'm doing that. And that's my God-given mission to do. I cannot die. When I was um, in the hospital with COVID, that's, that is the word that kept me going. And I said, you know what? I can't die in this hospital. And if I ever get COVID again, I, I can't die. Because, Lord, you gave me a vision to start a church, to start a ministry. And there's so much more things to come to pass. I can't die. So why? Because the scripture says where there's no vision, the people perish. So if you have a vision, right now, the enemy was trying to take my vision with my wife's Takis that I ate and rubbed my eyes with. So if I would have... If I didn't get that out of there, I would have had no vision and I probably would have perished. But so you got to have a vision in every aspect of your life. There is a vision. Amen. So what is a vision? A vision is a divine revelation of God showing God's plan for a particular thing. Keyword: God's plan. It can't be your plan. It has to be God's plan. Why does it have to be God's plan and not your plans? Because the Bible says that a man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his steps. That means you may plan something out for yourself and it may just not work out that way. And then you got to understand. So, and then when those things don't turn out your way, you'll get discouraged, you know, because you've lost, you've lost sight of what is your vision and um, what is God's vision for your life. Amen. So when you know, when you know the vision God has for you, you'll work towards it. Amen. You'll, you'll, you'll work towards it because you know that's what God has and what God has and what God is involved in. It prospers. So you got you got to know the vision and understand that, that make sure that the vision is from God. I've had in my walk with God so many visions. Some were from me. Some were from false prophets and, and it didn't come to pass. It didn't prosper. And when it didn't work out, it discouraged me and stuff like that, because I lot you lose sight of the vision that God has for you. This week, that actually kind of happened to me. I After the baptism, I, I had some things happen, and I kind of got a little discouraged. And as, you know what? I, I lost sight of the vision. I lost sight of, of like, what, what God has for my life. And sometimes 
when you focus on everything else other than the vision, that's how you get discouraged. That's how um, you get disappointed because you lost sight of the vision. And the Bible says that the, uh, when you don't have a vision, you perish. And that's how the enemy tries to get you to make you lose sight of the vision that God has for your life. Amen. So like I said, it's a divine revelation of God showing his plans for you regarding a particular thing. Daniel 8, 26, it says, and the vision of the evenings and the mornings, which was told is true. Therefore, seal up the vision for it refers to many days in the future. That's just the scripture in Daniel where God shows Daniel the end of the world, how it's going to happen. God spoke to him in a vision. He saw the end. He saw the Antichrist. He saw the, how the whole story ends. But it was of the future. So, when, so the reason why I'm using that scripture is because God wants you to know uh, what, what is to come. Bible does say don't worry about tomorrow, meaning don't be worried and, and freaking out of what is going to happen tomorrow, but be aware of what God wants to happen in your life tomorrow. He just doesn't want you worrying about it. And man, that's ministering to me right now, because sometimes we worry about tomorrow and say, okay, then I'm just not going to think about tomorrow. No, it's not that God don't want you to think about tomorrow. You know, it's just that God don't want you worrying about tomorrow. But if you don't think about tomorrow, you're not going to plan for tomorrow. You're not going to work towards tomorrow. And if you don't, like the Bible says, you don't have a vision, you perish. So you got to know what you're working towards. Amen. Because it's regarding the future. A vision is about the future. You don't have a vision for the now. You got to have a vision for the tomorrow. Amen. Prophecy is about tomorrow. So many people feel they have a vision for their life or a vision for a particular thing in their life, such as how their marriage should look like their house they're going to buy, their ministry, how they want their kids to be, a vision for a future business, finances, etc. Ask yourself today, what vision do you have? If so, is this your vision or is it God's vision that he's given you for you? Like I said, sometimes we have these visions for ourselves. Oh, I'm going to live here. I'm going to have this. I'm going to have that. And I'm going to have the other. And I'm going to be doing this and I'm going to work here. And you may have all these visions. And guess what? Unfortunately, some of them may not happen. And that's how discouragement and disappointment happens because it was your vision. But when you are when you know what God's vision is for, for you, when all these other fake visions want to come into play, you don't pay the mind to it. And if you do pay mind to it, I said these are the ones that don't end up working out. And when they don't work out, we get discouraged and we get disappointed. But if you're working on towards God's vision, it won't disappoint. And we're going to read it in the scripture where God talks about the vision. It says it won't disappoint. So any vision that disappoints wasn't God's vision for your life. Oof, that hit, that's, that's it. And home with me right now. So any vision that doesn't come from God will disappoint. But a vision from God will never disappoint. Amen. Jeremiah 23, 16 says, thus says the Lord of hosts. Do not listen to the words of prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. Like I said, just said earlier, make sure that the vision for your life regarding these different aspects of your life, they're visions that come from God. It says here, why? Because if you get visions that come from another false prophet, because there's going to be a lot of people that say, well, I'm a Christian and God told me to tell you this. One of the things I always tell people this, if you're coming to tell me what God said and God and I have a, a good relationship with God and, and you're coming to tell me something I never heard from God, I'm going to tell you, listen, God has my number. Tell him to call me. God doesn't call you to tell me something when me and him talk all the time. That's like if me and anyone on here or I talk to my wife every day and I know we're in good standing. We're not fighting. We have a good relationship. And we're talking all the time. And all of a sudden, somebody else comes around and says, yeah, your wife told me to tell you this. I'm like, but we just talked. We just hung up the phone. Why she wouldn't she have told it to me? That means somebody, that means somebody, uh, someone along the line is hearing something from somebody else. You know, because well, like I said, when you're in direct contact now, if you're not in good standing with God and when you're not where you need to be with God, then, yeah, God might send a prophet to get your attention and say, hey, God told me to tell you this, this, and that. And then you'll get with the program and you say, man, and, and, and that's different. 
If you're not where you are, need to be with God, and, and somebody comes and a prophet comes and speaks something, then that's different. But if you're in good standing with God and you're talking to God all the time, somebody can't come to tell you something you never heard or your spirit didn't already know about. Somebody, that person should come to confirm the vision in your life, not to try to, because like I said, a lot of people are going to come to try to stray you from the vision that God has placed in your life regarding those different things in your life. And the Bible says here, there's going to be prophets that will prophesy to you and make you worthless. They're going to speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. They're going to say things that is beneficial to them. The funny thing is, as soon as the baptism had ended, I actually got attacked by a bunch of other Christians. And it's crazy. A bunch of other Christians that I used to, I used to run with were saying, went around and, and the word got to me. They were saying, oh, get Jamie to stop. He shouldn't be doing this. He needs to be with us and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, coming against this whole thing that we got going on here and anyone that was there Sunday, that was, an, that was a good time. I had fun with everybody. And I mean, the food was good. Everything was going good. But I had people, like I said, other Christians I know trying to stop me from doing this and say, hey, stop what you're doing and come with me. You know, if I listen to that, if I listen, if I'm to listen to these people's vision and not not stick to the vision God has given me. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to listen to them. And according to the scripture it says, they're going to make me worthless because they spoke a vision of their own heart and not from the mouth of the Lord. Because there's a lot of Christians nowadays that say, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me, the Lord told me. And may God have mercy on the person that does that. Because the Bible says, if you spoke and you said the Lord said, and God didn't say, oh, you're in trouble. So I wouldn't recommend you do that. So so when we know the vision that God has for our life, you can't be paying attention to know. That's why I, 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 I kind of kind of stay away when I see certain Christians, when they jump at the opportunity, when they hear an invited preacher come. Oh, an invited prophet or preacher is coming to this church and everybody wants to go to that church service to hear that guy. Man, you better be careful. You want this guy to tell you something you never heard of before? That means your relationship with God ain't too good then, that you need somebody else to come and do that. And that's how you borderline, you fall into divination, looking for prophets and looking for people to come tell you something from God that you never heard of before. And when you have a relationship with God, God's going to tell it to you. And if he sends a prophet, it's just to confirm, like I said, what, what you God has already told you. And the only way he's going to tell you something you never heard is if you're not in good communication and good standing with God. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 7. It says, have you not seen a futile vision? Have you not spoken false divination? You say the Lord says, but I have not spoken. Just like what I said. Sometimes I would say, yeah, God told me this, this, and that, and blah, blah, blah. And God says here, that's divination. Divination is a form of witchcraft. Is when you say, God showed you this. God told you that. And God didn't tell you. didn't show you none of these things. So we got to make sure. Why am I saying all these things? Because we got to make sure that the vision, okay, this is my vision for my career. This is the vision God's given me regarding my finances. This is the vision for my marriage or my children and, or, or, you know, my ministry and my calling. You got to make sure that that vision comes from God and not from yourself. You might say, oh, but I picture I'm going to live here and I'm going to make this much amount of money. Did God tell you that or did you tell yourself that? You know, you got to make sure that is the vision God gave you. Because guess what? Like I said, if it's your vision, and then you, you're, you're working towards that, and they don't work out, you're disappointed, you get discouraged, then you get depressed. And, and, and that's what happens. Bible, depress, Bible, you know what depression is? I, and, and this, when I used to deal with depression, I heard the scripture says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. When you're depressed, your heart is sick. That, what is, how do you get depressed? Because your hope has been deferred. It means it didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. And now because of that, you now you're all down and out and sad because things ain't going the way you would like it to. It was hope that was deferred and it made your heart sick. So when, like I said, the vision God has for your life, it's, it will prosper. It's going to work out. And whatever is not the vision from God, it won't work no matter how hard you try. So that's why it is important that you know the vision that God has for your life and make sure that it is his vision. Because if it's not his vision, you fall into divination and you like i said the scripture here says you're going to say the lord said and he has not spoken so make sure that what you're saying it is from god i've had that happen to me and i learned in my walk with god i there was a the one situation in my life 
that I thought was God, and it, it turned out not to be God. And actually, a couple of other people, that's why I said the devil is one sneaky little rat, because other people that were I didn't even know of would say, hey, Jamie, God told me to tell you this. And I'm like, whoa, it matched everything I had felt. But none of them was from God, because it never prospered and never worked out. So what is from God, it will work out. Amen. So we must be intentional with what we're working towards in the vision God gave us. First, we must ask ourselves a few questions regarding the vision. First, is this your vision or God's vision? Like I just said, the vision for your marriage, your life, your job, your career, where you're going to live, what house you're going to buy, what car you have, whatever, all these different things about your life, because it's not just spiritual. People just think, oh, no, God only cares about the spiritual stuff. No, God cares about every aspect of your life. And he wants it to be part of his will. So ask yourself, is this his vision or is this your vision? So how does God tell you or show you that the vision he has for you? How do you know that the vision is from God? Three ways God will give you a vision. One, he gives you a vision literally, meaning you will see it literally in your spiritual eyes what the vision is. This means you can see something with your spiritual eyes, something beyond the natural. Just as an example, um, there's been a time where I'm praying for somebody and, and it's almost like a TV screen just goes in front of my eyes. And even though my eyes are open and I'm somewhere else, God will show me something. I've prayed for even people on here and I'm praying and then it's like a TV screen gets in front of me and I can see what's going on and God will show me. It would be like a movie playing in front of me while I'm awake and I can see you know, demons, spirits or things to come or good blessings that God has for them, you know, that's, that's having spiritual eyes, spiritual vision. So that's one form that God will show things to you in a vision. This means that you can see something with spiritual eyes, something beyond the natural. You can be awake and see something in the spirit. God might have, might have shown you something in the spirit regarding your life, or maybe things in other people's life or things that just may impact your life. You may say, well, how do I know that that's from God or scripture that you have in visions? Well, let's look at the word of God. Ezekiel eleven twenty four 24 says, then the spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the spirit of God and to Chaldea, to those in captivity. And the vision that I had seen went up from me. So God, in order to get a vision from God, the spirit, you have, the spirit will do it. The spirit will, 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 will give you that vision. You don't pick and choose. Sometimes I'll have people, hey, pray for me. And when I don't have a special word or something, I don't see nothing. Oh, like, why is he not trying hard enough? Like, why he didn't see this? I don't choose. I don't dictate the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will, will make it work. So, and it says here that the vision I have seen went up from me. So the Spirit provokes the vision. You don't. You don't provoke the vision to come from God. God, the Spirit of God will show you that vision. Amen. You got to be and make sure that you're in a good place spiritually in order to receive the vision. That way you can start working towards it. If you're not in a good place spiritually, chances are he's not going to show you the vision because you can't handle the vision. Amen. Uh, second key, God may reveal the vision through a dream. We must pray for our dreams that we have at night. God speaks through our dreams. People, And I'm not saying that every single dream that you have is from God. Some of it may be the devil speaking to you. Some of it may be you ate a cheeseburger before you went to bed, and now you're dreaming all these weird dreams. It doesn't mean that every single one of them is from God, but that is why you pray before you go to bed. And you say, Lord, if you want to speak to me through my dreams, show it to me. Give me the understanding that I'll know what this means. And when I wake up, I have the peace of God to know that this dream was from you. And if it's not from you, I'll wake up and I won't remember a single thing about it. And so God, God, God will give you dreams. So we must pray for our dreams, you know, um, and God, God will show you things that are to come. And um, there's a, I mean, there's a couple of people on here that can testify that I know um, that God has spoken to me in a dream. I even saw, I remember the year that the election was happening with uh, Trump and Biden and, and all these people were prophesying that God said Trump was going to win all these different things. I remember I had, I had, uh, I had shared with a couple of people not only did I see him lose, I, it was early on in the year. It was like in the month of January. I think not even December, the December, the, the year before the year of election and the pandemic started. 
I had seen the pandemic happen. I had seen Trump lose. I had seen everything happen in the dream. And I had shared it. And I even seen the shortages happen and stuff like that in the dream. And God showed it to me. And when I had told it to a couple of people, I said, oh, this dude is crazy. Oh, you know, he's probably, you know, I don't know what he's doing before he goes to bed that he's dreamt that. But guess what? Every single one thing I saw in the dream, it came to pass. So God speaks to you in your dreams. God will show you things that are to come and things that are to pass. So I think as Christian, you should pray about your dreams. Pray that God, God speaks to you. Pray that God shows you things. And anything that's not from God, you know, say, God, pray, give me the wisdom and discernment to understand it's not from you and you reject it. So God, the vision God may have for your life, he may show it to you in a dream. God may show you your spouse in a dream. God may show you the house you're going to live in in a dream. God may show you the ministry he asked for you and what you're going to be doing in a dream. That is why you must pray, because that's one way God speaks to you is through dreams. How do I know this? Let's go to the scripture. Job 33, verse 15, it says, in a dream. And a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their bed. God's saying that when you're on your bed and you're sleeping, it says you might get dreams. And you'll get visions that come from God. So pray about your dreams. Say, Lord, if you have vision for me or something you want to show me, then show it to me. And God will get, might give it to you in your dreams. So you must be praying. Like I said, understanding that God might speak to you. Maybe he may not. It may be yourself speaking to yourself or it may be the devil trying to speak to you. And you need to, that's what said, as you're asking God to show you vision, make sure that you're right with God. Because if you're asking for visions and you have different things in your life that it's not going, you know, you shouldn't be doing, it's going to hinder you understanding the vision. Uh, Daniel 2.19, it says, then the secret was revealed to Daniel in a night vision. So Daniel blessed the, the, blessed the God of heaven. Once again, we see here in the scripture, this, this was Daniel. God has showed Daniel the, the end. He has showed him what, how the world was going to end and the Antichrist, how he was going to arise and all these different things. He saw it in a vision in his dream, in his sleep. So God has, has showed it to him. So that's why I said it's important that you pray over your dream before you go to bed. Pray, say, Lord, if you want to show me something, show it to me in my sleep. Show me my dreams, because like I said, the Bible says a, a person without a vision will perish. God wants you to have a vision regarding everything in your life. You may not get it right away, you know, because the Bible says you prophesy in part and you speak in part, because if he shows you everything, you may, it's, it's not going to, you're not going to take a step in faith. Mm -hmm. So for example, when God told me to start this ministry, he didn't tell me who was going to be a part of this thing. He didn't tell me how I was going to do it, where I was going to have a building. If I was going to have the money or the funds, he just told me to do it. And I had to do it. I said, okay, God, this is the vision you have for me to start a church. And, and, and because you want me to bring back the days of the Bible of that, you know, we pray, we, we cast demons out, people get healed and speak in tongues and we love each other, bless each other. And we preach the word of God. That's the vision. Okay. And then I worked towards it. I took a step towards it. I took a step of faith, started the zoom. And now that's how everyone has come, you know, on this zoom and, just had a baptism Sunday, and now the, the vision is unfolding. I, I saw it. I worked towards it. Amen? So God will speak to you. And now the third way God will speak to you is he'll speak to your spirit of things he has for your life, and he'll confirm it through his word. God will never give you a vision and say, oh, this is the vision I have for your life, and it goes against the word of God. It has to match up with the word of God. Like God, God gave me a vision that I'm going to be a business owner. That I'm gonna be, I'm gonna own my own liquor store. That's not a vision that comes from God. It wouldn't match up with the word of God. Oh, God gave me a vision that the strip club across the street, I'm gonna own it. Like, no, that's not a vision that comes from God. That's a vision that probably comes from yourself or the enemy. So you gotta understand that the vision God gives you and speaks to your spirit, it got it has to line up with the word of God. He'll confirm it through his word. God will give you a vision for everything. Like I said. God wants you to understand that everything of regarding your life, he wants to give you a vision about it. God will give you a vision for your ministry, your marriage, your career path, financial place, houses, everything, many other details of your life. God doesn't just care, like I said, only about your spiritual walk. He cares about every aspect of your life. God wants you to know what he wants you working towards. Why? Because like I said earlier, in the word of God, it says a man without a vision will perish. You got to know what the vision is. Because if you don't know what it is, you won't work towards it. If you won't work towards it, you're not going to do nothing about it. And if you won't do nothing about it, then eventually you're going to perish. 
But if you know what it is, you'll work towards it. You'll work towards it. You'll obtain it. And when you obtain it, you'll prosper. And when you prosper, you're doing what God's told you to do. Amen. So God will speak to your spirit about the vision. Matthew 10, 20 says, for it is not you who speak, but the spirit of the father who speaks in you. So the spirit that whatever with the vision that God has for your life, that God, God is going to, um, like I said, he's going to speak it in your spirit and it won't be you. It says, oh, but how do I know it's not me talking? Because the Bible says his sheep know his voice. You'll know when it's the voice of God. You know, I'm pretty sure it's not you that's telling yourself you need to go read your Bible. You haven't read your word. I'm pretty sure it's you saying I'll read a, a real quick scripture, one of those little small ones before I go to bed so I can say that I read the Bible real fast. I'm sure that's you. So you'll know when the spirit of God talks to you. I said, if you're not sure of God, you, you need to check yourself. Amen. I said, yeah, for, for the spirit of the father will speak in you. Now, what are you supposed to do with the vision that God has given you so that it comes to pass? This is the main thing everybody wants to know. Okay, God gave me a vision. God told me to do this and whatever. But what is it going to take to get it to come to pass? Because that's what everybody wants. God gave me a vision. I'm supposed, this, is, this is what my man's going to look like. This is what my girl's going to look like. This is the kind of job I'm going to have. This is the house I'm going to own. And all these different things. This is the ministry I'm going to do. And people are going to, and all these different things. But at the end of the day, we want to see it come to pass. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the key for that is, one, you got to get to work. God can give you the vision. God can show you things whatever it may be, but you got to get to work. Oh, I have a vision that I'm going to get in shape. But if you don't get up and go work out and chill out with the donuts, then guess what? You're, ne you're never going to get there. You got to have a vision of what you want to get to. And guess what? When you have that vision, you know what it is. You know what it's going to take. Jesus said that nobody gets into building something or whatever without counting the cost. That means get know what you're getting yourself into. So if you know, for example, I know that starting a church ministry, I got to count the cost. It's going to cost money. I got to buy speakers. I got to buy a microphone. I got to get a place. Uh, I got to get people. I'm going to have to build up leaders. I'm going to have to pray. I'm going to have to do all these different things. You got, And once I know what, what the vision is I'm working towards, I know that I got to start preparing and, and, and working towards something. I have to get to work because if I don't, I can have the vision and all these different things. But guess what? It ain't going to come to pass if I don't get to work. So if God placed in you a vision regarding ministry, calling, career, business, venture, future home, get to work on it. Bible says faith without works is dead. So you can say, oh, but I have the faith that God's going to do it. Yeah, but the Bible says faith without works is dead. Some will say, oh, I'll show you my faith, but some will say, I'll show you my faith by my works. Some will say, oh, but works don't save you and all these different things. If you have faith, meaning if I believe God is going to do something, if I believe God's told me I'm going to have this or do that, if I have faith, I'll act on it because I believe it. If you're not willing to act on it, that means you really don't believe it. Because if you believe it, you'll act on it. If God says, hey, at the bank, they got a million dollar check waiting for you. If I really believe God told me that, I'm going to get in my car, I'm going to go and I'm going to drive and I'm going to go get it. But if I don't believe it, I'm like, nah, I'm not going to make no move. So you got to understand that whatever the vision God has for you, you got to get to work. And if you say, oh, I have faith in it. Well, you guess what? You got to get to work because faith without works is dead. Amen. So share. And this is the second part. You got to share the vision with those who will run with you to fulfill. Sorry, one second. That talk, he's left me thirsty. <laughs> the second is you got to share the vision with those who will run with you to fulfill the vision. You can't do it by yourself. Uh, Habakkuk uh, chapter two, verse two, it says, then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets that he that he may run who reads it. So you got to share the vision with certain people. I shared my vision with, you know, some of you guys on here and you guys have hopped on board and said, I want to be a part of this and I, I want to work towards building the kingdom of God. I want to get involved in all these different things. I shared the vision because at the end of the day, it's not Jamie's vision. It's God's vision for his church. And I shared it. And look, and some of you guys, a lot of you guys here have invited other people and it's, and it's growing. So you, because, so I shared the vision, I made it simple and now people hopped on board to support the vision. So whatever vision God has put in your life, you got to share it with people, but be wise who you share that vision with. 
That's why it's important when you know the vision and you know what you're working towards, you're going to know who you should share that with and who you, you, you won't. I learned when, I, in, you know, in my immature days as a Christian, when God would give me a vision, I shared it with everybody. I would tell everybody that I thought was a Christian, go, oh, I'm going to do this. God showed me that and blah, blah, blah. And it, and it was from God. But guess what? Not everyone has a good heart. And not everyone that says he's a Christian is truly a Christian. And they will come against it. And we'll get to that. But for right now, when you have a vision, just, you know, pray to God. God, who should I share this vision with? Who should I share this with so they can hop on board and start supporting this vision? Because the scripture says here, write the vision down, make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. In my house, if you ever come to my house, I have a whiteboard in my kitchen. And I write every single thing that God has, the vision God has placed in my heart, in my spirit, uh, things that are to come to pass. I, I I just erased a couple months ago the board because every single vision that I had put on there and I was praying and working towards, they all got fulfilled. Every, every single one of them already happened. So I had to erase the whole board and say, dang, God did it. Now I have a new, I wrote a new set of visions that God has placed in my heart. And, and already some of those have, have gotten answered, and there's still a bunch on there that are um, still still that still are waiting to come to pass. So I wrote it down. So I'll tell you this right now. If God has placed a vision in your life, write it down. Get a board, get a piece of paper, write it down, because it helps when you write it down. Because like I said, when something comes around that you may catch your interest, but it may not, if, if you don't write down your vision, you're going to settle for anything. My wife is here next to me. You won't see her on the camera, but she wrote down the vision that God has put in her heart regarding the husband she was going to have. Right, babe? Yeah. So she wrote, I wrote a big list. God, this is the vision you've placed in me of the kind of husband that I want. And guess what? When I came into the picture, and I time to, not time to pound my chest, but when I came into the picture, she said she went and looked at her list and checked off that I fulfilled every single thing on that on that list. So the Bible says to write down the vision. Keyword, you, God's vision, not your vision. Because my one thing my wife probably not going to tell you, she had another list before that one. And you hear her laughing because she knows she had another list before that one. And that was her vision. And some of those things I, I, she told me about, I said, yeah, I don't fit that vision. You know, she was like, uh, she was like, well, can I share one of them? Yeah. <laughs> one of them was like, oh, he's got to have a six pack. I used to have a six pack when I boxed. Now I have a one pack and I don't have it anymore. So that vision expired a long time ago. So all these different things. But then, like I said, oh, don't worry. I'll get the six pack back. <laughs> but anyways, it was so when she when she put when, when she stuck to the vision that God gave her, she, well, like I said, when I came around in the picture, she went and looked at the list. And same thing goes for me. I had I, God gave me a vision of the wife I was going to have. And then when I met my wife, I knew it was her. Within a month, I said, you know, we're going to oh, we're talking marriage within the first month we met. Right. Babe? Yeah. Because we knew, oh, this is the vision God gave me. Well, boom, 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 boom. Everything's checked off. You're it. But, but what happens is when we don't know the vision God has for us, any any Joe Schmo that comes around, we take it. And then we're like, oh, well, maybe the, hopefully this is from God. Well, guess what? Because you didn't have a vision. And when you don't have a vision, you perish. And like I said, because you take anything, you'll take any job, anything, any opportunity that pops up, you take it because you don't want to be empty handed. But guess what? That's how you perish because you had no vision where there's lack of vision that people perish. Amen. So you got to have a vision when you know what that vision is. Write it down. Get a whiteboard, put it in your room, get a book, write down, say, Lord, this is the vision you've given me for my marriage, my children, my finances, the kind of house I'm going to have. So that way, when that day comes and that happens, you look back at your book, you look what you wrote, and you say, well, you told me I was going to have this kind of house or whatever. You told me I was going to have this kind of ministry in this area. When you look at it in that opportunity, you say, okay, this is how I know this is God opening this door because it fits the vision. When it don't fit the vision, like I said, it don't, it don't work out when it's not from God. Like I said, and if it don't fit the vision that God is telling you, then like I said, maybe it was your vision and not God's vision. So like I said, let's go back to the script. You write the vision, make it plain. So like I said, make it, make it simple. That way when you share it with other people, they can hop on board with it 
and, and, and they'll, they'll support the vision, like I said, but be wise to not just going around sharing the vision with just everybody and anybody, because there's going to be a lot of people that are jealous. There's a lot of envious people that don't want to see the vision that God has placed in your life come to pass, because for some reason, maybe their vision didn't come to pass. It is because they don't have the knowledge and the understanding that it's not about your vision. It's about the one God's vision that he gave for you about your life. Because the vision that God puts in your life doesn't disappoint. But the vision that you give yourself, that one will disappoint. Mm -hmm. So I'll reread Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Write the vision, make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. So whatever vision God's giving you, like I said, I used to have a whiteboard. I mean, I still have the whiteboard. I had a bunch of things on there. Every single one of them checked off. I said, Lord, you told me I'm going to have a boy. I checked it off. Lord, you're going to tell me this. Boom, 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 boom. And I've checked every single one. Now, my whiteboard has a new list of visions. Some of them are checked off. Some of them haven't. Now, when anything that comes around that doesn't fit what's in that board and the vision God has given me, I won't take it. I won't accept it. Because there's a saying, you don't want to jump on just every opportunity or any opportunity that comes around. That means you don't have no vision for yourself. If ten, if every job that it offered me a job, I hop on it, that means I don't have no vision. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just I'm gonna take whatever comes my way. But when you know what God has for you, you're, you're, you're gonna go for the one that fits the vision. Amen, like I said, and you share with people according to scripture and people will support the vision. They'll jump on it. Those are the people you wanna surround yourself with, people that believe the vision God has given in your life. And the ones that don't, stay away from them. Because if they're not going to support the vision, that means they're going to come against it. And people will come against it. And one of the things I want to mention is what are the cons of the vision? That's something that we understand is we may have a vision, but there's some, bad, <laughs> there's some cons of having vision that comes from God. And one of them is that it takes time. The vision will take some time. It's not may not happen so fast. And, and sometimes we want things to happen quick, but it takes time. They, oh, God promised me I was going to be financially blessed. And I'm still, you know, I'm still tied on money. Well, it might take some time. But God told me I was going to have that kid. It might take some time. God told me he was going to bring that man of God. And I'm getting old. Well, it might take some time. And those are the parts of having the vision. You know, it might take some time, but you keep working towards it. Don't stop working towards it. It takes time. Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. That means there is an appointed time for the vision that God has given you to come to pass. It can't just happen at any time. It says here, it is going to happen at an appointed time. And it says here, but at the end, it will speak. And it will not lie. That means the vision God has given you, it's going to happen. It's not going to lie. It says, though it tarries, meaning though it may take some time, it says, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And in other versions, it says it will not disappoint. So it says, even though the vision may take some time to happen, it says, wait for it. Because it will surely come. I actually had one like about seven years by myself. Then 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 have no one. I got into the wrong relationship in the in the middle of, of those seven years because. I strayed from the vision that God gave, had given me. I became impatient. I said, oh, I'm tired of waiting and this and that. And I went and I did my own thing. And guess what? When, that, when I strayed from the vision, I was headed toward a path of perishing. It went really bad for me, real bad. And I started to get out of there and get back on track and stick to the vision. And then, though it took some time, and the only reason why it took time was because, I mean, a guy had to change me and work in me and do things in me in order so I can be in the position to receive it. But guess what? I waited on it. It took some time, but it came to pass. So when I met my wife, my wife showed up. If she fit exactly the description that God had given me in a vision. And this is just another testimony. God had told me that I'm going to have a, I was going to have a boy first. I remember when everyone, my wife got pregnant, was like, oh, you might have a girl. You might this and that. I said, nope. And my family member, my mom, my sister, my mother-in-law, my sister, they're all on here and they can testify. I said, no, I know I'm having a boy. I know I'm having a boy. And if there's, if I'm lying, they can write in the chat, this guy is a liar. <laughs> but I said, no, I'm having a boy. I know for a fact I'm having a boy. God showed me in a vision that I'm having a boy. Can somebody unmute their self that knows that and say he ain't lying? 
<laughs> He's not lying. That's not true. <laughs> so I have said that God gave me the vision. I'm having a boy. And this is the cherry on top. Check this out. I said, I even know what he's going to look like because God showed it to me. I said, he's going to have my wife's eyes, my wife's cheekbones, my wife's nose. The only thing he's going to have from me is my mouth and kind of my jaw structure, because that's how I seen him in the vision God gave me. Well, this week, well, it was this week, right? We saw this. This week, we went to the ultrasound to check him out. Well, guess what? He has my wife's nose, my wife's cheekbones. And obviously, I can't tell too much of the eye, so I guess we'll wait to see that one. He has my mouth, and he kind of has my jaw structure already. Fits exactly the vision. Your mouth. Huh? So anyone that's on here knows that I said this before we even saw anything. And, and anyone who knows, my baby doesn't let himself be seen at all. So, like, this was the first closest picture that we've seen of what he looks like. So, But, but I said this from before because God has showed it to me already in a vision. He already showed me, so I already knew. So when they come to pass, it was funny. When my girls, my wife sent the picture out to a couple of people, everybody said, oh, he's got Jamie's mouth. My mother-in-law was like, that's Jamie's mouth right there, <laughs> and whatever. And everyone was like, oh, that's, that's Crystal's nose and her cheekbones and everything. So the vision that God gave me, it came to pass. According to scripture, Habakkuk 2.3, it says, and when it is for an appointed time, it will not lie, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. So whatever vision God has given you, guess what? It will surely come. It may take some time. It may feel like it's taking a long time, but it will surely come. But if you're doing what I mentioned before, which is working towards it, you know, having faith, get to work, share the vision, write it down, pray for it, and start working towards it, guess what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen fast because it says here, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So it, it, it might, like I said, it may, it may feel like it's taking a while, but if you're doing everything you're supposed to do, guess what? The vision that God has placed in you, it will happen. Amen. But if you're not doing those things, guess what? You, all you have is a vision and it's, it ain't going nowhere. You got to work towards it. Mm -hmm. So another thing, prepare for others to come against the vision. Uh, many are going to come against the vision. <laughs> Um, a lot of people said, you're going to have a girl. I know it. And I'm like, no, God told me, <laughs> yeah, I'm having a boy. Yo, you're having a girl. I just know it. You know, some pe people will try to stray you from the vision. I remember when I used to tell people, I know what my wife is going to be like. They're like, oh, how do you know? How's she going to be like? I said, she's going to joke a lot, just like me. She's going to like watching boxing. She's going to like shooting guns like I do, go fishing and box with me and do all these different things. And people like, there's no such thing. There's no girl that's going to do that with you. And I was like, yeah, she's going to read the Bible with me. She's going to pray. She's going to help me do ministry. And she's going to, and people are like, man, who does this dude think he is? He's not even, he's not even good looking. He's demanding all these different things. And guess what? God gave me that vision. And guess what? It happened. It happened in the past. My wife is right here next to me. She'll say if those descriptions don't fit her, she'll say that it don't fit. But guess what? It does. So when it came to pass, people, like I said, people were trying to stray me from it. Nah, God's not going to give you that. God might give you a girl that's been run through by a bunch of guys. God, God might give you this or God might give you the other. Maybe she may not even be a Christian and God's going to use you to change her. And I'm like, maybe because that's what that's what you did to yourself. Don't try to mix your own situation with mine. Oh, well, yeah, maybe maybe God doesn't want you to have a child. Maybe Maybe he's going to have you do this or do that. Maybe God doesn't want you to get married. I even have some people say, oh, maybe God, maybe God wants to see you by yourself. You know, so there's going to be a lot of people and so-called Christians that are going to come against the vision. The devil is going to come against it. Other people, your own mind and your own heart will come against the vision God has placed in you. How do I know that? And this will be, it'll be the people closest to you that will come against the vision God has placed in you. Because if you look at the Bible, there's a story of a man named Joseph that God had given him a vision, he would be ruler over his brothers. And one, and these people were just average Joe Schmoes. God said, Joseph, you're going to be ruler of this entire land. Guess what? He shared the vision. Um, my sister said, remember, people compare you to the Apostle Paul saying, maybe you you were meant to be alone. <laughs> yeah, my, 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 my sister just said it. I even have people said, oh, Jamie, you love the Lord. You're radical for God. And maybe you're just like the Apostle Paul who didn't get married. So maybe you're, God has called you to be by yourself. And I'm like, 
And for a minute, I say, like, dang, yo, that means God thinks I'm so ugly that I have to just stay by myself. And, but I didn't, if I would have listened, and these were Christian people telling me this, even some of them were pastors. I said, no, God told me and showed me this, this, and that. And they just looked at me like, this, this dude is burnt out. You don't know what he's talking about. But guess what? Just as the book of Habakkuk says, it, though it tarried, it will surely come to pass. And guess what? It came to pass. Thank God she's next to me now and carrying the boy that I saw in, in my vision as well. So God, whatever God is, like I said, the visions come, people will come against it. People will try to get you to stray from it. You can't have that house. You can't do that ministry. Who do you think you are? You're not going to have that baby. Maybe you should settle for having an orphan. Maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do the other. It is, like I said, everybody's got an opinion and people are going to come against it. Like I said, but don't like, like we read early in the scriptures before it says there will be prophets that are going to come and they're going to prophesy a vision out of their own hearts. There's going to be people that prophesy and tell you things that are so-called Christians. They're going to say things that comes from their own heart. And the Bible says that they will make you worthless. That is why you need to know the vision that God has given you regarding every area of your life. The vision isn't just ministry. The ministry, I mean, the vision is for everything. God wants you to have a vision about your marriage, your kids, your ministry, your job, your finances, where you're going to live, the house you're going to buy. Why? Because the Bible says that he cares about every single, he knows every number on your head. And he says here, doing your every step. That means God cares about every detail. And the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. If you don't work towards, if you don't know what the vision God has for you, you're not going to work towards it. And if you don't work towards it, like I said, you're not doing nothing. When you don't do nothing, you eventually you perish. You got to know the vision. And when you know the vision, you work towards it. And like I said, people will come against it. The devil will come against it. But guess what? Whatever the devil does, it won't work. Whatever people say and do, guess what? It may slow you down. It may hinder for a little. But guess what? It has to come to pass. Amen? So to encourage you, the vision God has given you, it will come to pass. You may do stupid things on the way there. You may you may have made some mistakes. You may fall and this and that. But guess what? Dust yourself off and keep going. The vision will come to pass. God, by what it sees here in Habakkuk, it won't lie. It will speak. And guess what? When God speaks, he says it will happen. Amen. So like I said, Joseph had a vision and guess what? He shared it with his brothers. He said, I'm going to be the ruler above all you guys. Guess what? His own brothers, they said, oh, that's the vision God has from you. Let's make sure it doesn't happen. But guess what? They sold his brother into slavery, got him captured, ended up being a slave and it slowed it down. But and it slowed it down. He ended up being a slave. Guess what? After he became a slave, somebody accused him of something else. He ended up in prison. He ended up going through all these tough times because people didn't want to see that vision come to pass. People will come against it. Like I said, after the baptism happened, other a bunch of Christians that are supposed to be Christians, even an old church that I used to go to, they all are rising up against me already to try to get people to stop coming. Don't join him. Don't be a part of this because... They have their own selfish desires and I, they're trying to stray me from the vision. But if I know what my vision is, you can't stray me from it. You know what? And Joseph knew his vision. And even though he ended up going through jail, going through being a slave, all this, he knew the vision. He ended up being in that vision. He ended up being the ruler over his brothers. But guess what? It was his own brothers that were jealous of him. It was his own brothers that betrayed him. It was his own brothers that came after him. To try to make sure that that vision, because their vi that vision intimidated them. But if they knew their own vision that came from God, they would be so worried about their own vision, they wouldn't have been worried about Joseph's vision. And that's what that's how other people are. And, and, and it's sad, but it's how a lot of people are. If they knew their own vision, they wouldn't be worried and be hating and jealous and talking bad about you. They'd be too consumed with working towards their own. But because they're miserable and don't know their own vision and they know they're perishing, they want to stray you from yours. Do not let nobody... Do not let no situation, do not let nothing or what anyone has to say stray you from the vision that God has placed in your life. Amen. And the third key, sometimes the vision doesn't fit your agenda. And that's one of the things we got to understand is the vision that God has given you. It may not fit your agenda. <laughs> I never pictured myself starting a church. I was like, a dude like me, when they see me, they'll be like, that's a pastor. That's a dude starting a church. Look at his beard. Look how young he is. Look at all these different things, you know. And people are going to come against it. And, and it may not fit your agenda. I didn't picture myself doing this. 
I honestly picture my uh, the vision and the agenda I have for my life. I was supposed to be a world championship boxer. I was supposed to be doing all these different things, but guess what? That, that didn't fit God's agenda. So you got to understand that the vision that God has for your life, it may not fit your agenda. And you got to understand that. One of the quick things that I'm going to end with this, Jonah, God had given him a vision. He said, Jonah, you need to go to Nineveh and tell those people to repent. If they don't repent, I'm, I'm going to destroy them. One of the things people don't know is that the people of Nineveh were actually, Jonah didn't like them. They were his enemies. So imagine that God talks to you to go tell somebody that you clearly don't like and is your enemy. Hey, uh, turn away from your ways because if not, God's going to destroy you. Now me, if I know God's telling me somebody I don't like, that's an enemy of mine, he's going to destroy them if they don't turn away. I might just stay quiet and <laughs> let God do what he got to do, you know. But again, and that's why a lot of people don't know that Jonah, that was one of the reasons why he tried to get away and didn't go try to tell the Nineveh, people of Nineveh to repent. That's why the whale swallowed him up, because he didn't want to do what God had told him to do. He didn't work towards the vision God had told him to do. He got swallowed up by the whale. But guess what? When he realized it was time to do it, he, you know, the whale spit him out. He went to Nineveh. He told them to repent. They repented. God didn't destroy them. So sometimes, and, and it, but if it was according to Jonah's agenda, according to Jonah's agenda, they should have got destroyed. There were people that he didn't like, and there was the people that were an enemy to him. But guess what? Like I said, sometimes the vision God has given to you, it may not fit your agenda. And you got to be willing to accept that and know that why, because your, your ways are not God's ways. His are higher. Your thoughts are not his thoughts. His are higher. Amen. So whatever God has for you and whatever vision he has from you, it's better for you. Because if you place your own vision, it will disappoint you. It will discourage you. It won't work out. But when you put your trust and your faith in the vision God's giving you, it will not disappoint. According to Habakkuk 2, 2, it says they will surely come and it will not disappoint. So if you feel like, oh, but if I believe and I start working towards the vision and it doesn't happen, that's not it. that can't happen. It says here, but it will surely come to pass. Learn that scripture. And like I said, write it down. Habakkuk says to write down, says write down the vision, make it plain, write it down. That way, when, when anything that comes around that doesn't fit the vision, you won't accept it. Because if my, my wife would have put, would have put, okay, um, you know, my husband, God has told me he's going to be Latino because, you know, I'm, you know, we, we're going to speak Spanish, teach your kid. And then a Chinese dude comes around and is going to say, well, that's definitely not, that's not part of the plan, you know, because God gave me this vision. So you're not going to settle for anything because God has already given you a vision for it. Oh, God called me to pastor a church. And then another church is offering me to, I don't know, be a bus driver at the church. Well, if it doesn't fit the vision, I guess when I, 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 I'm not going to go for that. Don't be an opportunist where you jump on any opportunity that comes your way. Jump on the opportunity that fits your vision. Amen. And with this, I'm going to conclude. You must be intentional with the vision. That's very important. Everything you do, you need to have the intent that this is towards my vision. I'm going to do this. This is for my, my, my vision that God has given me towards my ministry. Oh, this is the vision God's given me for my finances. God gave me this is the kind of vision I'm supposed to have uh, for the house he wants me to buy. Every move I do and every decision I make in my finance, it needs to be intentional towards my vision. You can't sit around anymore hoping that the pieces come together and then say you have faith. Faith requires work. You have to do your part. The vision requires prayer. Getting in the word in order to get directions from God on how to take the next steps. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but leads to destruction. There's a lot of things you may think, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go about it this way. But if you're not in constant prayer and talking to God, you, it, it, the Bible says there's a way that's going to seem right to you, but it's going to lead to destruction. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when I strayed from the vision before I met my wife, I strayed and dated somebody else. I strayed from the vision. And, and, and I paid the high price for it. And that way seemed right to me. But guess what? It was leading to destruction. It didn't work out so well. But when you know what the vision is, you stick to it. And do not take anything else that comes around. Oh, but this look at this great opportunity. I always say a person that jumps on every opportunity. I, I don't want to be around those kind of people. Because that, that per there's no loyalty in that person. They'll just go and go wherever the wind blows. No, when you know what your vision is and you stick to it. And nobody should be coming and making you stray from it. Mm -hmm. Um, 
the Bible says that man makes his plans, but the Lord determines his steps. So when you make your plans, like I said, know that God is the one that determines your steps. So the question you ask yourself is, what are the future plans you have? Are you not sure of the vision God has given you? Are you confused about future things for your life, if they're from God or not? People say, oh, but yeah, but the Bible says, oh, uh, don't worry about tomorrow. It says, don't worry. It didn't say they don't know or don't, don't plan for it. The Bible says you, you plan for it. It says, who says does this and doesn't count the cost? Jesus said, count the cost. You got to get know what you're getting yourself into. It just means don't worry about it, though. You can think about tomorrow and plan for tomorrow and not have to worry. Amen. The Bible says, like I said, so that's what the Bible says. So are you not sure of the vision? Are you confused if they're from God or not? Ask God to reveal to you the vision. Start being intentional with it. Also, check to make sure that no false prophets have spoken false visions over your life. And at the end of the day, ask yourself tonight, what is the vision that God has given you? And with that, I'm going to end. Ask yourself tonight, what is the vision that God has given you regarding the things going on in your life? If you say, well, I don't know what the vision is. Well, tonight, pray. Ask God. Say, God, I want you to reveal to me and show me the vision you have for my marriage, my kids, my finances, uh, the house you want me to buy, the business you want me to start, the ministry I'm supposed to be doing. Show me the vision so that way I know to work towards it. So I know I can start working towards and do what I'm supposed to do. And you say, oh, well, you might say tonight, I already know what the vision is. God showed it to me. So now you say, God, give me the patience to uh, wait on it, that I know that it surely it will come and it won't lie. And it will, it will speak and it will come to pass. And I just need some patience, you know, and that God, if there's something I'm supposed to be doing to work towards it, then that, then that I do it, you know? And like I said, and if you think that there's some visions in your life, you're like, man, there might be mines or maybe from a false prophet, maybe it's from the devil or whatever it may be. Then tonight's the night that you rid yourself of any vision that does not come from God and start working towards the vision that God has placed in your life. Make sure that it is, like I said, it is God's vision, not yours. Yours will disappoint, but God's will not disappoint. And what God says he's going to do, trust me, he's going to do it. It may take time, but he's going to do it. He's going to do it and don't stray from it. Write it down. Like I said, we just read in Ezekiel where it says, write down the vision and share it with people who do care about you, who love you, who are going to hop on board. with it. This is the vision God has given me for my marriage. Share it with another person who's married or whoever's going to believe in that vision and pray with you. Oh, God's giving me this vision for a business. Share it with somebody. Well, God's going to send, you know, the God, that, that's how you're going to know who's going to join you and help you and build you. Just like all you guys have decided to join and be a part of this Bible study and this ministry and this church that we're building, you guys see the vision, you, you join it. And I believe everybody on here has a vision. God has given you a vision for the type of marriage, family, like I said, all these different things. But now it's time to start doing something about it. Be intentional with the vision that God has given you. Everything you do, you used to say, what well, is this, what it is I'm doing, this I'm about to buy, this where I'm about to go. Does this fit the vision? And if it doesn't, don't do it. And if it does fit the vision, go towards it. Amen. So if anyone uh, would like uh, any prayer, and if you say this message is for me, or I don't know what my vision is, or maybe I just need prayer about the vision God has already given me, or you say, man, I have some of my own visions that I have in there that I just want to get rid of so I can focus on God's vision, whatever it may be, just Write your prayer request in the chat and I'll pray. Um, whatever it may be, your prayer petition, just write, write it in the chat up and be more than glad to pray for you. Also pray for me, myself. You know, I got a couple of things going on with myself that I need prayer for. So make, I just ask that you guys keep me in prayer as well. And dang, you're in the same spirit, you know I need the water. Amen. Jody said she needs prayer. She wants to know what the vision is. Amen. God will show you. God will show you. Like I said, God will show it to you in a vision, a literal vision. I show it to you in a dream or he may speak to you in your spirit. And everything that he shares, it has to line up with the word of God. And he will. Like I said, God wants you to have a vision about everything. So you work towards it. You don't stray from it. You don't settle for less. If you're not, oh, I don't know the vision of the type of man or woman I'm supposed to be with. Guess what? Then any Joe Schmo that comes around saying something nice to you and saying he's going to go to church with you, you're going yeah. to, you know, you need to. Um, yes. Much, uh, what are you trying to do, sweetheart? All right. Let's see.
Uh, firm and same prayer to guide me to my vision in which will be his will. Amen. We're going to, that's what I said. God's vision for your life will line up with his will. And when it does, it will not disappoint. It will come to pass. Anybody else? Anybody else need any prayer? You can write it in the chat. And if not, you can unmute yourself or something. I think Gregory, I don't know, you unmuted yourself. I don't know if you wanted prayer or something. <clears throat> If not, I'll pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I just thank you tonight, Father. I thank you for this message tonight. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, that you have placed visions in our life. Father, you care about every detail about our life. You care about our marriages, our relationship, whether we're single, whether we have somebody, whether we have kids, whether we don't have kids, whether we have the job that we want or we don't, that we're doing the ministry we're supposed to be doing or we're not doing it. All these different areas of our life, Lord, you care about us and you want us to be aware of what you have for us so we can work towards it. Your word says faith without works is dead. So I pray in this night, Father, that this message may increase everyone's faith, that they start working towards it. And um, sorry, guys. They, they start working towards the vision, Lord, that you've given them. That Father, if anyone has lost hope, in the vision you've given them, maybe because it's taken too long, maybe too many obstacles has presented itself and they've lost hope inside of the vision that you've given them. I pray tonight you would encourage them, strengthen them tonight, Lord, to believe the vision you've given them for their life, whether it's their marriage, whether it's spouse or their relationship status, whether it's the, they're single, or maybe it is their ministry and their calling, Father God, or, or maybe it's they're about to make a business move, financial move, a job move. And Father, they will stick to the vision that you have given them, Father God. And if any vision that was not from you, Lord, I pray that that just be wiped away tonight. Father God, any vision that's going to disappoint us and discourage us that wasn't from you, take that out of our heart, take it out of our spirit, remove it, Lord. That way we don't work towards a fake vision. We don't work towards a false vision, that we will work towards the vision that you have given us, my Lord. So I just pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray for Jody. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would give her and her husband, Father God, vision for their family, that they will see the vision of what you want their marriage to be, what you, how you want them, their children to be raised, to be like, to be tremendous women of God. Give them the vision regarding their career. This is the career you want them to work towards, mm -hmm. Father God, and that they'll start working towards it and be intentional with everything so it doesn't disappoint, so it prevails, Father God, and that way it prospers because your word says that you delight in the prosperity of your people, Lord. So you want to see everything of their life. That says that you desire that we prosper in all things, just as our soul prospers. So I pray in the name of Jesus, they would know the vision and they would work towards it, Lord. I pray for my brother Furman, who is also asking to, to guide him in his vision, Father. I don't know, Lord, if he already has a vision for his life that, he's, that you've given him, or maybe he doesn't know. But I pray tonight, Father God, and from here and this day forward, you would make crystal clear the vision that you have for his life, Father, in his finances, in his career, in his relationship, and his future plans, Father God, that all these things, Lord, your word says that we make our plans, but you determine our steps, that you would determine every step of his, Father, that every step he takes, Lord, he knows with assurance that this is the step you want him to take, Father God, and that you would guide and you would give him the strength. We cast out every fear in the name of Jesus because we know the enemy is going to come with fear to place fear in him or different things so he doesn't take the steps forward he needs to take regarding the vision you've given him, Father God. Mm -hmm. Father, you worship you, for you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, Lord. Mm -hmm. Strengthen him, Father God. Fill him with your spirit, Lord. And any devil and any demon that comes against them to stray him and stop him from the vision, Father God, I pray that he would just stomp them out, kick them to the side, and get them out of his path, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, mm -hmm. I thank you for that in his life, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I thank you for everyone else that's on here, Father God. I thank you for the vision you've given them. I thank you, Father, for their life. I pray that you would bless them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen. Anybody else? Last chance to ask for prayer. If not, that means you must have your vision then. If not, we'll leave it at that. So I pray, like I said, I pray this message really touched everybody. Like I said, we'll start, start working towards the vision. Be intentional. 
with the vision that God has given you. Don't don't lose hope. Don't lose patience. Just keep working towards it. And if anything comes to disappoint it, rebuke it. It's just the devil trying to get you to stray from it. Like I said, after the baptism was over on Sunday, I had a bunch of people, like I said, come after me. A lot of people came after me to say, oh, don't join this guy. Don't be a part of his thing. He's supposed to be part of our church and be here doing this with us and all this garbage. <laughs> if I listen to it, if you listen to other people's visions for your life, you're going to get discouraged. They're going to try to pull you away and do all these different things. Don't pay them no mind. Don't pay the devil no mind. He got nothing good to say. So stick to the vision. Like I said, I believe a lot of people already have a vision that God's given them for their life. Stick to it. Write it down. Please, guys, write down your vision. Write it down. Write it in your house somewhere. Pray over it. That's what I do. Me and my wife, we have a whiteboard. We write the vision down. We pray over it. Glory to God. The last time the board was filled, like I said, every single one of them, all the visions came to pass. That We checked every single one of them off. We had to erase the whole thing and start over because it's biblical. People say, oh, that sounds stupid. Well, guess what? It's in the Bible. Jesus said, write it down. Pray over it. To share it with people who are going to hop on board with it and it'll come to pass, you know? So like I said, just make sure it's God's vision and not your own, you know? So with that being said, all right, God bless you guys. I love you guys. Um, oh, real quick, before I forget, we are most likely going to have our first Sunday service on the 27th, which is not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. It'll most like I'll be texting you guys the address and everything. For those who are coming to the baby shower, it's probably, it's going to most likely be at the same place we do the baby shower at. So it'll be on the 27th and we're looking at either 10 or 1030 in the morning to do the service. So just keep that in mind. The 27th, start sharing it and inviting people. Like I said, the baptism was amazing. It's crazy that a lot of people were on the baptism. Nobody really knew each other like that, but we all spoke like we known each other for a while and we all had a good time. So let's, let's keep that same momentum going. Well, and, you know, like I said, we'll start having our Sunday services. And uh, I believe God's doing some great things. The vision that God's place is, it's, like I said, it's coming to pass. And uh, I believe if you hop on board with the vision, then other people will hop on board with your vision. Amen. Mm -hmm. So God bless you guys. I love you guys. And I hope you guys have a good rest of the week. And uh, no matter what the enemy throws at you, remember that God has given you the victory. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you. No problem.